Hey guys, William Padilla Brown here, back at it again with another uh, video update from the home systems, living systems. Um, we got some cordyceps growing, cordyceps militaris doing its thing, uh, almost ready to start sporulating, uh, almost ready for a harvest. Um, this cordyceps is not growing um, in a commercial fashion, this is a wild culture, it's uh, showing variant morphologies, it's doing... Um, a bunch of different things. So we have some that are fat, some that are skinny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take spores from them and isolate the spores so we have a more uniform culture uh, that will produce uh, all the same type mushrooms and uh, more mushrooms so that we can get bigger harvests. Uh, the spirulina's cultures are doing good. Uh, we have some grain spawn of various uh, edible mushrooms uh, that we're going to be selling in the local area here. Uh, we've got some lion's mane oyster and shiitake. Um, the shiitake is going to the local hydroponic store uh, where we sell our spawn to help bolster CO2 in people's uh, grow rooms. Um, and then we have the lion's mane uh, that, and the oyster mushrooms that are going to uh, the Garlic Poet here in New Cumberland, which is a, a local restaurant. We're featured on their spring menu. You should go check it out uh, and get some awesome food cooked up gourmet style by Chef Kurt. And then uh, we, you can go pick up our mushrooms every weekend at the Radish and Rye Food Hub over at the Broad Street Market in Harrisburg. <coughs> So uh, we always keep this filled, got lots of spawn running, ripping and rolling, uh, getting ready to go into all the other fruiting rooms. So, um, yep, that's just all of our spawn going. Got our little cordyceps set up over here. Um, if you didn't see the other video, I did uh, get a new recycle table. Um, my neighbors on the other half of this house moved out. They were throwing away this nice table, so I cleaned it up very well and introduced it into the laboratory. Um, so that's pretty much uh, it from the lab. I'm going to be getting some more spawn prepared. Uh, because we have some workshops coming up uh, here on uh, March 27th. On the 26th and 27th, there's going to be an awesome um, uh, awesome mushroom event, uh, a weekend full of fungal affairs or fungal fortunes uh, offered by uh, Good Sense Farm in D.C. So we're going to be partnering up with them, and we're going to be heading down there on the 27th, and I'll be teaching a full day on growing mushrooms, and we'll have access to their uh, farm uh, mushroom facility. So that's going to be really awesome. You can check that out. Uh, search Good Sense Farm and you can find uh, the link to the event on their website and get your tickets on there. Um, and then also you can check out Delaware Permaculture. Uh, look through their event list on April 1st. We'll be over at Greenlight Plants in Landisburg, Pennsylvania and I'll be teaching a full day on outdoor mushroom cultivation. So we're going to be doing uh, mushroom uh, and hugel culture mounds, mushroom garden beds, um, just small mushroom wood chip beds, um, doing mushroom logs, growing mushrooms in straw, um, all sorts of good stuff, all, all based on uh, growing mushrooms outside. Um, so that's uh, April 1st, Landonsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, you can check that out by searching Delaware Permaculture. Look through their event list and you can get your tickets on there. Get them quick because both of those events are about to be sold out here soon. So it's uh, going to be lots of fun. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, just like I said, you're going to be getting lots of mushroom spawn prepared for those events. And I might as well just take you on to the next thing. Extract sitting here in this little dark uh, closet uh, cabinet. Um, got some chaga here and some very high proof uh, ethanol alcohol, um, which I'll be taking uh, to the Modern Spagyrix uh, extract workshop uh, tomorrow. So that's Sunday. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Check the date on this video upload. Um, but tomorrow in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, I'm going to be doing Modern Spagyrix Herbal and Mushroom Extract Workshop. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And always got some tinctures going. Got to stay with the holistic in the spagyric medicines. So the darkling beetles have bred some mealworms. I say we have a few hundred mealworms in the trays here now. Um, they usually just hang out on the food, on the potatoes. Um, and for that reason, see this mealworm, uh, you can see it on the camera. When they're really little, you almost can't even see them on the camera. Um, so uh, don't throw away any of the rotting uh, vegetables or fruit or anything like that you're feeding them. Just keep them in a separate thing just in case any mealworms are growing, living on there. Um, so yeah, these are the darkling beetles. Uh, they just produce these small mealworms. The mealworms will shed their skin as they grow, and then eventually they'll pupate, <clears throat> and they'll turn into beetles, and we'll have a reproductive colony uh, forever. Never going to run out of mealworms. Um, I am going to introduce mealworms from different, um, different cultures, sometimes just to refresh our genetics so we don't have a crazy inbred colony of mealworms. And I do keep some of them in different environments. So some of them have, are only living in sawdust. Some of them live in oats, and I'll continue feeding them different things to express, uh, to get them to express different genetics, um, play around with the epigenetics to make sure that, as I said, we don't get too many uh, crazy inbred uh, cultures of anything. Um, so yeah, that's our mealworms uh, set up, and we're going to go down to the basement.
All right, guys. So over there, uh, we have some uh, mushroom logs that are fully inoculated. You can see that white in there, um, and they're going to be going up in the Lemoyne grow room. I'm waiting for our humidifier system. Um, I just ordered the fogger part of our humidifier system, so that should be coming in here uh, this week, and we'll be growing mushrooms in our uh, Lemoyne facility with the capacity of 200 bags, uh, trying to get up uh, to around 15 to 20 pounds of mushrooms a week. Um, and then from there, we're just gonna keep growing because we got lots of more space to grow into. And um, yeah, just gonna keep expanding uh, and get to the point where we can provide jobs for the local community because that's what it's all about. We want the community to be uh, able to have access to uh, jobs that you can feel ethical about doing and jobs that are regenerating our economy and our community instead of dis uh, destroying them. Uh, essentially uh, we don't want any uh, corporations that don't care about the community we don't want any uh, big companies coming into our local communities uh, where they're taking our money and taking it outside of the community uh, so we don't need none of that we can get uh, more jobs here now so that's the whole reason I even started doing this when I was like 16 years old I was just like what the heck what am I gonna do with my life I was 17 I started working as a server in restaurants with people that had families and they're almost like 40 years old and they're in debt from going to school and I just saw that the system didn't work. So I worked hard and getting to the point now where we're going to be able to provide good work in the community so people don't have to have that same struggle or worry about those same things anymore. We want families to be happy, families to be able to provide uh, the essential uh, necessities of life. So we're going to be working and starting these small businesses based off of resources that are commonly uh, utilized by all humans. And we're going to be putting them into a common place of the community. So the community can have something in common unity, uh, which is the small businesses that we will all work with at together that are putting the things that we also have in common unity in, uh, in our possession, like food, uh, access to healthcare. We're going to try and get some free clinics here going. And um, we're going to get a page up for SYNC, uh, which is Sunny Yards, New Cumberland. Uh, there's a plot of land over in New Cumberland, um, and there's two plots of land right next to each other, adjacent to each other. One of them uh, used to be a trailer park. Um, so there is a little bit of contamination in the soil, but it has been available for a long time. Plants are busting through the pavement. Uh, if any commercial um, operation wanted to come in here, they would have to do a lot of construction. But we can go in and there and uh, revitalize the land, regenerate the land, make it usable for an urban farm, build some tiny homes on there, get some free clinics in to get some of the doctors and uh, holistic practitioners in the area that want to do good work uh, with people in the community, uh, with the people in the community. So we can uh, just, like I said, make everything we need accessible to the community and get it out of the hands of big corporations and put it in the hands of the people that are actually using it. Um, so yeah, with that said, we've got lots of plants down here, uh, starting seeds in the worm compost. Uh, so we're growing our plants. All of the plants are growing in worm compost. Um, and the worm compost is made from our kitchen scraps and mushrooms that we grow. Um, so we have our worm bins over there, which I'll show you. Um, but yeah, so we have our seeds here. Uh, we have our mulberry here. And as I said, I'm growing out this mulberry. Um, where we're going to eat some of the fruits from it eventually, um, but I'm growing it out mostly for the leaves. But now that it's starting to be spring, there's so many mulberries out here. But I'm going to keep uh, one or two mulberries that I can keep all year round so we can sustain a colony of uh, silkworms. Um, so yeah, we're going to have silkworms because we're going to start playing around with spinning different fibers. Uh, we're going to get some more uh, micro livestock and uh, some rabbits and stuff like that, maybe an angora. Uh, so that we can start spinning different fibers, start making our own clothes. Um, and actually, just this past Wednesday, Pennsylvania passed the Senate Bill 50, uh, which allows for the uh, hemp industry to be revitalized in Pennsylvania. So uh, different farms that are promoting education, which we might be here soon, uh, will be able to get access to legally start cultivating uh, hemp in Pennsylvania. So we'll have local Pennsylvania hemp, which can also be utilized as fiber uh, and various textiles so we can start making our own clothes here in Pennsylvania and play around and start making plastics and other stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I don't want to get off on too many rants because I could talk about so many things forever. Uh, we have our Namako spawn, uh, just like a whole thing of Namako spawn over here um, in these wood chips um, <coughs> that uh, we're going to utilize to create some garden beds uh, filled with mushrooms. Probably take that out to one of the workshops. Um, so over here we have our chickens. Uh, they're just hanging out. Um, they they freak out when we come because they think we're going to put some bugs in there for them. Um, but they have their water dish over here. It's not uh, it's heavy. It's a little four ounce uh, mason jar so they can perch on it and uh, drink on it without it falling over. I, we change that often. Um, we have this water that has electrolytes in it, but you don't want too high of a pH of water. But we get the electrolytes because you want a little bit of minerals to add into their water. Um, and what we do 
uh, is we add a little bit of this uh, apple cider vinegar here um, to make their water a little bit um, more acidic. So we're adding about a teaspoon uh, to the gallon and it helps to just uh, provide them with some other various health benefits to keep them nice and uh, healthy. Uh, we're feeding them this mix here of um, corn grits, uh, flax seeds, and uh, wheat germ. Um, this is all that Bob's Mill brand. Um, I think it's Bob's Mill, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about, those little packages. Um, so yeah, uh, recycling all our lettuce things. Recycle, reduce, reuse, upcycle. Make sure we're not throwing away any plastics. Don't want to be part of the problem. Um, so yeah, we're feeding them that. Uh, we also feed them crickets, and the crickets are eating uh, kitchen scraps as well. Um, so they love the crickets. The cr crickets are a protein-rich snack for them. Um, we just feed the crickets um, kitchen scraps, and they uh, they reproduce in there. We just give them a little wet cocoa coir every now and then in a little cup, and they'll lay lots of eggs in there. Um, and then they produce lots of frass. So people actually buy this cricket frass uh, because it's really good for plants. So we're just producing our own from kitchen scraps. We're feeding our chicks. Um, we're also adding nutrients into our gardens. Um, so all the mealworm colonies are doing good. The mealworms are still eating the styrofoam. And they're also eating these little oasis cubes, which I'm not sure what the actual material is. I'll get back to you guys on that. Um, but they're doing well. They do prefer regular food. So I do give them regular food. Um, I don't want to be inhumane about this. Um, <coughs> but they do... Uh, go between regular food and styrofoam. So I've given them the choice. Um, so the mealworm colonies are doing good. Um, our worm bins are thriving. I've harvested gallons and gallons of worm compost uh, this year. Um, so yeah, the worms are doing good in there. Um, we have a big, big bin of worms right here. And they're just eating, uh, like I said, they're eating kitchen scraps uh, and mushroom compost and um, shredded junk mail. Uh, so yeah, not throwing anything away. Uh, there's no such thing as waste, and our landfills are getting full. Uh, so we need to figure out something else to do with all this stuff, and uh, we can use it to create resource and and uh, put money in our pockets and food in our bellies. Uh, so yeah, uh, the micro remediation unit. We're going to start another one this year. Um, so what we've done is we've actually added darkling beetles uh, into the micro remediation unit. So uh, mealworms and most beetles. Uh, a lot of beetle larvae and beetles, not most beetles, um, but they'll eat rotting wood and fungi and stuff like that. So we're just recreating natural systems by putting these beetles in here because they would naturally be eating rotting wood and fungus. Uh, so they're breaking down the material from our micro-remediation unit into compost and they're also laying eggs with mealworms in there and the mealworms will also break it down into more compost. We have more reishi growing in here with the microalgae spirulina and chlorella, a little cactus guy over there hanging out, and some more reishi growing up here. Not much to see, just medicine and healthy food growing in unison um, with the microalgae cycling the carbon from this, uh, the mushroom grow just so we're not contributing to any atmospheric carbon. Not that the mushrooms are producing so much carbon that it would make a big difference, but we don't want to lose any energy at any point of our systems. I forgot to mention um, that I think April 17th or April 12th, uh, one of those dates is a Sunday, um, but we'll be doing a spirulina workshop and you can find that on Facebook. Uh, just search uh, Grow Spirulina at Home and it's an event um, right around April 12th or April 17th. Just like I said, I can't remember which off the top of my head is the Sunday, um, but we're harvesting worm compost out here. Just like I said, uh, we got lots of good worm compost that we can use to amend our gardens this year. I'm growing some potatoes in these boxes here, um, so I just got them growing in compost like I grow all my other plants, um, and I'm just going to keep uh, adding more uh, compost as the potatoes start to grow up um, to get as many potatoes as I can, and then I'm going to put these boxes inside of more boxes to stack it up and just see how many potatoes we can get growing. Um, other than that, not too much other stuff going on. Um, the kale did come back. I put the sea buckthorns into the ground. Um, and they're doing well. I mean, it's been sunny. Uh, there is a chance that it might snow, um, but then that's one day, and then it's going to be really warm afterwards. Um, so yeah, the kale's coming back. All this is new growth. It's doing really good. We should have some kale here, um, beginning of April. Um, we got one of the burners running. I'm going to go get some more propane here and, uh, do another, uh, burn and, um, just keep preparing more sawdust, more more material to grow more mushrooms and uh, continue feeding the community and feeding my family. Um, so yeah, 
If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, share on Facebook and Twitter, all your favorite permaculture blogs, um, mycology blogs, phycology blogs, entomology blogs, botany, anything like that. Um, other than that, it's been William Padilla Brown. This is my living home systems. Uh, hope everybody can take the chance to do something good for their community and for their family. Oh, rainwater catchment. Don't want to waste any rainwater. Have a good day, guys. Mm-mm. <laughs>